Hello students, I am Dr. A. Thirumani Devi. In today's module, we shall discuss about total energy requirement. The energy requirement of an individual is mainly based on the amount of energy derived from food. This energy needs will help to balance energy intake and expenditure. Therefore, estimation of energy requirement could be based on amount of energy intake and energy expenditure. In practice, the measurement of energy intake is less reliable when compared to measurement of energy expenditure. This module is designed to understand the meaning of the three components of total energy requirement. Learn about the different factors influencing basal metabolism, physical activities and thermic effect of food and also understand the various factors related to total energy expenditure. The total energy requirement of human body includes three major components and are basal metabolic rate. 60 to 65 percent of total energy requirement is mainly due to basal metabolic rate. This energy requires maintaining basal metabolism. The basal metabolic process which are essential to keep the body alive and healthy. It also applicable for growing at an appropriate rate. The second one is physical activity. 25 to 30 percent of total energy is mainly due to physical activity. This energy is essential for physical activities that is for muscular movements. The third one is thermic effect of food 5 to 10 percent of total energy requirement. The energy that is released as the result of thermic effect of food. It is the process of increased energy expenditure and therefore heat release that inevitably occurs between 1 to 2 hours after a meal due to the stimulating effect that the nutrients of the food have on the metabolism in general. Of these categories, energy spent in physical activity is most responsible to voluntary control. Now we will see each aspect in a brief manner. Basin metabolic rate, the energy required to carry out the involuntary work of an individual is known as basal metabolic rate. It covers the functional capacity of various internal organs such as brain, heart, kidney and lungs, the sec secretory activities of glands, peristaltic movement of gastrointestinal tract, oxidation occurs in resting cells, maintenance of muscle tone and also body temperature. The brain and nervous tissue account for one eighth of the energy utilized at the basal state and the lungs and liver, heart and kidney for additional three fifth of energy utilized at basal state. Now we will see the second category of total energy requirement that is physical activity level. The energy spent in physical activity is the most variable composition of a total energy requirement. It may range from as little as 10 percent in person who is in bedridden to much as 50 percent of a total energy requirement in an athlete. Energy spent in physical activity includes in voluntary exercise and during involuntary activities and also maintaining postural control. Now we will see the physical activity level. It is defined as total energy required over 24 hours divided by energy needed for basal metabolism over 24 hours. In an adult man and woman who is non-pregnant and non-lactating woman, BMR multiplied by PAL that is physical activity level is equal to 
total energy expenditure. PIL is basically the ratio of a total energy expenditure to basal energy expenditure. Based on the intensity of the habitual physical activity level, the values for different physical activities are given in table. For example, in this table we will have type of activity and PAL value. For example, the person who is doing sedentary activity or light activity, the PAL value is 1.4 to 1.69. For the person who is active or moderate, the value is 1.7 to 1.99. For the person who is vigorous or heavy, the value is 2 to 2.4. Now we will concentrate the various factors affecting physical activities or the type of physical activities. Now we will see the sedentary lifestyle activity. The people who have occupation that do not demand physical effort or pass most of their leisure time by simply sitting or watching television, listening to music or using computer. Teachers, office executives and clerk come under this category. Housewife who have energy saving devices and domestic help are also coming under this category. The next one is moderate lifestyle activity. These people have occupation that are not tenuous in terms of energy need but involve more energy expenditure than that described for the need lifestyle activity. They may be spent time in moderate to vigorous physical activity like jogging, running or cycling for one hour. Servants, house cleaners, construction workers, rural women involved in works are going long distance to collect water and women who do brick work may come under this category. The next one is vigorous active lifestyle People engage regularly in tenuous work, leisure activities for several hours. People who swim or dance two hours daily. Heavy agricultural laborers, rickshaw pullers, mine workers etc. are coming under this category. The energy expended will vary not only with the different type of activities undertaken but also by the time spent in each activity. Intensity, duration and frequency of activity, body mass of the person, efficiency at performing the activity and age influence energy expended in physical activity. You may be interested in knowing about the other aspect of total energy requirement. That one is termed as thermic effect of food. This third category of energy requirement to be taken into account in estimating total energy need. That is the energy needed to provide for thermic effect of food. Earlier this was known as specific dynamic action of food. The energy corresponding to the thermic effect of food include energy cost of absorption, metabolism and storage of nutrients within the body. In this, as the result of a stimulation of metabolism, increased heat production occurs from 1 to 3 hours after a meal. The magnitude of thermic effect of food overall is that of 10 percent of needs for basal metabolism and activity. The thermic foods promote fat breakdown without affecting lean muscle mass by increasing the PMR. They help in maintaining negative energy balance in the body. You may be interested in knowing about the methods available to find out total energy requirement. As already discussed, 
the energy requirements are best measured by considering energy expenditure. This expenditure includes BMR, regulatory thermogenesis and physical activity. The components of energy expenditure related to thermogenesis are known to merge into the measurements related to the cost of physical activity for all practical purpose. Consequently, the new approach has only two principal components of basal metabolism and physical activity. So, the energy needs on the cost or cost of physical activity and rest and is expressed by multiply with BMR. Now, we will see the measurement of total energy requirement. First method is energy balance method. The total energy needs are based on comparison of total energy intake over several days with the amount of energy required for any observed change in the body composition. If the person is neither gaining nor losing weight, that calorie intake would be the requirement. The accuracy of this procedure obviously depends on the accuracy of food intake record and the accuracy of measurement of change in body composition. Second method is heart rate monitoring method. Estimating total energy needs by constantly monitoring the heart rate is mainly based on the strong positive relationship between heart rate and oxygen consumption thereby energy is released from the food or energy stores. The relationship between heart rate and oxygen consumption can be explained by the fact that oxygen needed to release energy from the food is transported through the blood. Increased oxygen consumption requires increased blood flow powered by an increase in heart rate. During the preliminary study, heart rate and oxygen are the both directly monitored while the subject undertakes a series of activities and used for total energy requirement measurement. Let us have a look on doubly labeled water techniques. In this method, information related to total energy expended for a period of 10 to 20 days by a free living subject which is likely to reflect the normal energy requirement of the subject. The subject orally takes water which contains a known amount of stable isotopes of both hydrogen and oxygen. Within few hours, the isotopes of hydrogen and oxygen mix with the normal hydrogen and oxygen in the body fluid. As energy is used, in the body, carbon dioxide and water produced. Carbon dioxide is released from the body through breath and water is lost through breath, urine, sweat and other evaporation. As oxygen is present in both carbon dioxide and water, it is lost from the body more quickly than hydrogen which is in water uh, but not carbon dioxide. The difference between the rate of loss of oxygen and hydrogen reflects the rate at which carbon dioxide is produced which in turn can be used to estimate energy expenditure using indirect calorimeter formula. The doubly labeled water method is currently performed method for measuring energy expenditure of healthy as well as clinical population. This method has been used to determine the role of energy expenditure and physical activity in weight control and to validate method for assessment of dietary intake. The accuracy makes to more valuable for the study of human energy metabolism. Next method is factorial method. A factorial method of measuring total energy expenditure involves calculation of each of the three categories of energy needed. 
method 1 calculate the basal metabolism using any given methods calculate the activity cost over a period of 24 hours add 1 and 2 and calculate 10 percent allowance as thermic effect of food calculate total energy requirement by adding basal energy needs physical activity needs and thermic effect of food now we shall move to the factors mainly influencing total energy requirement now it is recommended that energy requirement must be evaluated in terms of energy expenditure rather than energy intake superimposed upon the energy expenditure for maintaining the involuntary activities of the body are such factors are muscular activity, mental effort, calorigenic effect of food, body and environmental temperature and age and growth. Among the various factors now we will see muscular activity. Next to basal energy requirement physical activities that is muscular activity accounts for the largest component of energy expenditure. The physical activity can be classified into sedentary, moderate and heavy activities. The energy expenditure by those involved in heavy activity would be greater than those individual in sedentary and moderate activities. For example, some person who are vigorously active their energy demands for the activity may be more than the basal metabolism. A still greater amount of energy is required by those individuals who do hard manual labor. Bes besides the size of the body, doing the exercise more energy required for a heavy person. The kind and the speed of work or exercise are the factor of concern in determining total energy requirement. The more vigorous physical work, the greater the calorie cost. A man doing heavy work may need 4800 or more calories per day, while an individual of the same body built up, age and height living in the same climate but doing sedentary work may require only 2500 kilocalories. In general, the food intake should meet the energy output except in individual who need to gain or lose weight. Modern living with its many labor saving devices and electronic equipment minimize the physical activities. The inactive or sedentary person usually requires approximately 30 percent of additional energy above the basal metabolism while lightly active worker might need 50 percent above their basal a moderately active person 70 percent and highly active person needs 100 percent above their basal metabolism energy demands now we will see the second factor mental effort mental work does not appreciably affect energy requirement. In a highly emotional state, physical activity of a restlessness, muscle tension and aggravated motion of the body expend energy. The state of health may have a marked effect on physical activity. Such physiological and psychological stresses as fatigue, tension and lack of sleep may influence the physical activity and total energy requirement. Next is a calorigenic effect of food. The intake of food increases the production of heat and is known as a calorigenic or thermic effect of food. The thermic effect of food is the stimulation in metabolism and production of heat that occur from 1 to 3 hours after a meal as the result of the presence of food in the stomach and intestine and digested nutrients in the bloodstream. 
the increase in energy cost because of this thermogenesis accounts to about 10 percent of total for basal metabolism and physical activity. Therefore, to estimate total energy need, it is necessary to add an additional 10 percent so that there will be sufficient energy available to meet total energy needs. The fourth factor is body and environmental temperature. In some condition, the body is subjected to be in a extreme cold at that time the body temperature is maintained by an increased level of involuntary and often voluntary activities and results in a considerable raise in the metabolic rate. In other words, very low or very high environmental temperature may increase slightly the caloric need. This additional energy is required to cover the work cost for maintaining body temperature at 37 degrees Celsius. The energy cost of work in cold weather is slightly greater than in warm weather. However, in extreme heat that is greater than 98 degree Fahrenheit or 37 degree Celsius. The heavy activity or work requires greater energy expenditure. Nature, however, regulates the heat loss very effectively in various climates by enhancing human being to shiver or sweat as temperature dictates. Next factor is growth. Age and growth of building new tissue represent the presence of energy in one or other form. When growth is rapid in the first year of lifespan, energy demands must be high. In fact, energy demand is higher per unit of body weight than at any other stage of life. At the time of pregnancy, energy cost is increased to meet the demands of maternal and of the fetus, placenta and uterus and also the additional protein and fat stored in maternal body. During lactation, additional energy need is accounted for energy value of milk and energy cost of secreting the milk. In growing child, energy must be provided over and above the total energy requirement. This additional energy requirement is meant for covering the total cost of increasing body weight and height. As a child grows older, the rate of growth decreases and energy requirement for the growth is reduced. So, by conclusion, energy need of an individual is mainly governed by his or her growth and physical activity. Now, we will see the factors increasing total energy requirement and some factors are responsible to decrease total energy requirement. The factors which are responsible to increase total energy requirement are number one, male, sex, sex is an important factor to be considered for the calculation of total energy requirement. Second one is growth. For example, in the early stage of lifespan like infancy and adolescence, the energy requirement is comparatively higher due to the rapid growth and development. Like that, number of factors are responsible to increase total energy requirement and are more body surface area. The next one is a increasing muscle mass. The next factor is hyperthyroidism, fever, pregnancy, lactation and good physical activities, smoking, alcoholism like that number of factors are involved to increase total energy requirement. At the same time, some of the factors are responsible to decrease total energy requirement and are 
female increasing in body fat hypothyroidism less surface area sleep aging process undernutrition are mostly involved to reduce total energy requirement like that number of factors are involved or related to total energy requirement now we will summarize this module the human body total energy requirement has three major categories of basal metabolism energy requirement for physical activity and thermic effect of food basically basal metabolism covers a person's largest expenditure of energy followed by physical activity that is exercise which is followed by thermic effect of food thank you students